Sports Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max. We have hip hop legend Esham joining me here on the show here tonight to discuss his brand new album, Purgatory, available on all platforms now. He greets the platform here, a true legend in the game indeed. Esham, how's it going, man? How's everything going? Oh, uh, what up, though, man? Everything's going good. I'm just um trying to make sure everything's cool right here. Let me look at some. Oh, sweet. All right, sweet. There we go. We're all set? Yeah, we all set, man. Um, yeah, everything's going smooth. How's everything with you? Everything's going good, man. I know you don't like being called a legend because you always say it that you feel as though you only have one leg in the game. But my book, you're a legend, you're an innovator, acid rap. It's you've had a, a lot of impact on the game for sure. You can see it in other people's styles. And this was a, a big reason why back when you were doing Venus Flytrap, you didn't really want to release another album after that because you, you just you were tired of life and you were seeing all the people stealing your style and not giving you that acknowledgement. But you kept on going. Um, no doubt. I mean, um, I guess um, from what you're saying, I mean, being in the game for so long, yeah, I have been frustrated at times, but um, I, I wouldn't say I was tired of uh, people stealing my style or anything like that. You know, I know people um, are inspired by a lot of the stuff that I do, so I wouldn't necessarily say that I was tired or you know, that I was frustrated at anybody doing that because, um, you know, I do understand. So, you know, just coming from uh, being an adolescent or just actually a, a kid, you know, 13 years old to now, you know, I've just I've learned a lot along the way. You know, I, I grew up on the microphone, actually. So purgatory is where I'm at today with it, you know, and that's what I'm on. And um, that's what we're here to talk about purgatory. Yeah, purgatory. We're, we're here. I, I saw the the reference to your tweet. Why do you feel as all this is the perfect embodiment of who you are as a person today? Well, you know, I think a lot of people got a misconception about who I actually am, you know, and just um, my artwork, me as an artist, you know, and uh, me as a man. You know, I think a lot of people got a misconception about, like I say, who I am. And um, if you never heard any of my works or you may have heard some of my works, you know, like I say, today, Purgatory is probably like the closest reflection to my myself as you could get, you know, throughout my entire career of uh, entertaining people. I am curious because Active Shooter, that track is it's a strong statement to open up the album. What was it that you want to go in that direction for the opening? Well, um. Once again, you know, when I create music, it's um, just a reflection of real life. You know, I was uh, moved to write a song about an active shooter when uh, the tragic events happened down there in Texas at that um, the middle school or elementary school or whatever was going on. And it just seemed like, you know, just a, it's a lot of kids out here killing kids. And um, I was like I say, um, moved to write a song about some real life events. And um, that's where active shooter comes into play because unfortunately um, there's a lot of active shooters in the USA. Yeah. It's, it's going on all over the place and the, the media publicized it to the point where it's almost uh, people just carry on and trying to get the attention and some kind of fame off of it, which is crazy, but you see it going on, but, but for, for purgatory, because you, you were just uh, on tour with violent J with, obliteration so are you going to be going on the tour here for purgatory what are the plans move forward with the promo for this new album well right now i'm just giving people a, t a chance to uh digest the record you know i think um a lot of people listen to my music and um they think it's the same as other people in the genre you know and i think what separates myself from other people in this genre is that um i've always talked about religion and the way to um make a person think about their actions and um, actually the consequences from some of their actions. So I've always threw that religious element in my music. And um, that's where we're at with Purgatory, um, looking at it from uh, Dante's Inferno perspective or, you know, the seven circles of Purgatory is um, just something to make people think about, like I say, their actions, you know, through my artwork. And you, uh, you're so talented in so many assets because I heard that you got your associate's degree for culinary arts. Yep, I actually do. Um, you know, I'll be chefing it up in the kitchen. I mean, it's not the most glamorous job, but um, 
just like other chefs, you know, we, we do it for a certain reason, you know, it's real hard work and I'm, I haven't, um, you know, I'm not scared to get my hands dirty. So, you know, yeah, I be chef and I, and I do, um, like a gourmet chef in that respect. Yes. Frozen up here. Yeah. We kind of froze a little bit. You, you were, I don't know. I might've been, I don't know. The zoom froze up real quick. So you left off of you talking about how it's a hard job in, in the kitchen and other chefs continue on from there. Well, yeah, I just was saying, like, um, just being a chef, I mean, it's not the most glamorous job in the world, but I do it for other reasons because I'm not scared to get my hands dirty or I've never been um, afraid of some hard work. So it's just another passion that I have. And um, yes, I do. Um, I'm, a, I'm a gourmet chef. Yes, of course. Congratulations on that, because you moved to Minneapolis to to really pursue that. Well, really, I moved to Minneapolis because I was trying to hook up with Prince. But unfortunately, he passed away and um, that didn't never happen. But I end up staying here and um, I like the town. So, you know, I'm in Minneapolis for right now, but the whole earth, my turf. Yeah. <laughs> but originally, Amityville is where it all started. You were originally out in New York and then you went out to Detroit. You were raised in Detroit, East Side. Absolutely. I mean, I was born in um, Amityville, New York on Long Island. Um the only significance with that is that um, they made a movie about a horror movie called Amityville, Amityville horror. horror. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that movie before. Um, I'm I'm a fan of horror movies and stuff like that. But, um, you know, my music is I'm not trying to scare people with my music or anything like that. You know, I'm I make music about real life and, you know, people just got a misconception about what I do when I talk about it. I think real life is the most scariest thing ever. And, and I talk about it in such a way people think it's horrific, but I'm just, you know, like I say, just a reflection, just reporting the news, so to speak. That That's just something I did hear in one of your previous interviews is that you regret not correcting people when they were labeling you as a Satanist, because you're right. Your raps are real life They're And you've classified it. You're, you're your own Stephen King. Absolutely. I mean, um, entertaining people for over 30 years, of course, you know, I've heard a lot of things, you know, a lot of things that were untrue. I just looked at them like myths, too. You know, I come from the era where, you know, any news is good news, even bad press, you know. So I just I would never correct people about certain things that they would say about me. And, um, you know, yes, yeah, it's, it's true. I'm not a Satanist. No, you know, although I, I mean, I study a lot of books and I study a lot of things, you know, so I. I'm hip to a lot of things, but I'm definitely not a Satanist in, in any regard to that matter. No, and and I agree, man, especially when, when you break it down in all the years in the past and just in different interviews. I, I do have a question for you because you you are so outspoken in your music and throughout your, your career. Do you believe in God? Do you feel as though? Because with certain things that happen in the United States, sometimes I'm like, like that situation with the school shooting down in Texas. When events like that occur, it's like, how is there a God? But this awful stuff happens. Do you do you question God? Well, I mean, it's not for me to question God. It's for each individual to question it for themselves. You know, it's it's your own personal relationship with a higher power or a God or the oneness. So, you know, I do believe that there is something higher than greater than myself. Yes, I do. So, I mean, but that is up to each individual's um, interpretation and, and how deep they want to go with you know, their own beliefs. But I think the main thing is just to really have faith and, um, in a positive and something positive, have faith in something positive. Mm -hmm. We already know you already labeled it here. We, we already know it's, that's just people out there stirring up the rumors with the whole Satanist stuff, but there's something that you do admire because Prince is an idol and you always loved how there were rumors about him and he was able to grab people's attention. Is Do you feel so, even though, like you said, with the bad press and everything that People, those rumors kept people fascinated with you at the same time, similar to Prince? Absolutely. I mean, what, what, when people don't understand something, they tend to fear it or shy away from it. And um, I think that worked to my advantage and disadvantage at times, you know. But it's just, you know, I've been in the, the music business, entertaining for so long. It's just time for me to come out and really let people know, you know, which side of the fence I actually sit on especially your earliest inspiration that I was learning about and rest in peace, my condolences to your cousin, Maurice Smith. He had his own rhyme book. He was nicer than you at this age. You, I heard you talk about him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, unfortunately, you know, he got shot in Detroit when he was 10 years old and um, 
he was really like the MC out of everybody that I knew. And he was the one who um, got me into hip hop and stuff like that. When he passed away, you know, his mother, which is my auntie, she gave me his rhyme book. And I just, you know, just studied that and just, you know, went down the hip hop path, you know, from un, un, unfortunate again. circumstances, you know. So, yeah, that might have sparked um, my. Um, f- you you f- talking about him passing away. Yeah, that his whole passing away and just the way it happened, that might have actually um, steered me down the road of hip hop, you know. And here we are 50 years later, hip hop, you know. Yeah, we've come come a long way. It- do you feel as though, because I always feel that it, it, we really don't bring you guys up as much as we should. And that's why I wanted to bring you on my platform. And I have a great appreciation for Insane Clown Posse and what you have done in paving the way for those guys, innovating acid rap. But I think people, I don't know what it is. Why do you think you guys kind of never get that attention? You have huge fan bases. You have an impact on hip hop. But why don't you think that you get that proper attention and credit that's deserved? Well, I mean, I don't. I'm, I don't look at it like that, you know, I don't look at it like, you know, we we don't necessarily do what we do for attention, you know, um, the Grateful Dead didn't do what they did for attention. And it lasts for for decades, you know, even to this day, you know, I just sold some records today. I don't even know if people are still actually selling records, but I am, you know, 40 years later, you know, I'm still selling hip hop records. So, you know. I don't know if it's, I'm not looking for attention. I'm, I'm just selling my artwork. I don't, I don't do this for attention. And I don't think, um, you know, that people are overlooking us, you know, it's just like, you know, I don't think they're overlooking us. I just think, you know, they don't understand something, so they might shy away from it. But um, years later, or whenever they get hip to it, whenever they come in and get hip to the game, which is the wicked shit, which is the art form, which is the culture, whenever they come into it, then they'll realize that it was something beautiful all along. And, um, you know, maybe they just not open-minded enough to accept it and accept um, the art form. Mm -hmm. What is it about Detroit? Because you, you, you've the wicked shit is what you clarify it as, and, and and what the sound is. What is it about Detroit that is the wicked shit? Because you've described Detroit in the past; it has its flaws, but it's a beautiful city. What do you think it is that Detroit is the embodiment for hip hop? The sound is the wicked shit. Well, um, the wicked shit. Let's just be clear. You know, the wicked shit is not a sound. The wicked shit is a feeling. It's a bunch of different feelings, you know. That's why my records sound like they sound because I got a bunch of different feelings at any given time, you know. So the wicked shit is not a one particular sound, it's just a feeling. You know, and as far as Detroit is concerned, when I grew up in Detroit, it was a it was a city of ruins, you know. We grew up in, you know, it was ashes. It's it's a Where's mighty phoenix now, you know, it's coming out of the ashes now. Detroit is blossoming and back into you know, the beautiful city that it once was. But when I grew up there, you know, it was burnt up buildings and uh, vacant houses everywhere. But it's coming back now. It's not like that now. No. As far as acid rap, these record labels, they were out there trying to take advantage of what you had going on. So they took what you were had going on and they created horrorcore because what you were doing was the acid rap. So they went and created horrorcore. Well, I mean... Yes, we've been in business for a long time, and yes, it's it's been very lucrative. I believe if I were I was anywhere in America at any time, and I said I got a gold mine, then anybody would run to where I was at and start digging. So I don't blame anybody for trying to get in on the game and make them some money as well, because that's what hip hop is all about. And acid rap is just a another form of hip hop, the wicked shit. It's just another form of hip hop. You know, I really don't like to put labels on any kind of music, whether it's hip hop, rock, jazz, you know, pop, because those are just boundaries. And when you start putting labels on stuff, that's the easiest way for you to segregate something. So if, if music is just music, then that's just what I do, music. You know, it's the wicked shit, but it's just music. And I'm just an artist creating such. You have that inspiration from ACDC, Kiss, Ozzy Osbourne with sampling all the rock records back in the day. Even on this album, like you get into your rock back. Active Shooter is one of them. 
Absolutely. I mean, before, you know, I would sample the greats, you know. Now, you know, just, you know, studying the game and, and trying to be like them, I just want to play like them and I just want to be respected like the Bob Dylans, like the Princes, like the Michael Jacksons and like anybody who ever came before me and uh, really uh, made great music. You know, I'm all about the content. I'm all about the lyrics, you know. I don't look at it like I'm making raps up. These are songs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm making songs like, like I say, like Bob Dylan would write them, man. And I always try to not, not, I haven't always been as positive or open-minded, you know, on the microphone, you know, with uh, time comes wisdom, you know, and um, I've learned to just try to put forth a more positive message, even though I could still keep a hardcore, you know what I'm saying? I try to put a positive message and and spin it back around to something positive, you know, and let the listener know that even though you're going through something that, you know, it, it is a little light at the end of this dark tunnel, you know. I think what makes you so distinct in this game is that you do have your own sound. And your brother was the one that put you onto the game early because you were listening to all these guys. He's like, you can't be like LL Cool J. You got to create your own sound. And you did that. Absolutely. I mean, we come from the golden age of hip hop. So, you know, you you had to be original. You had to have style, you know. And um, the reason that, you know, they say Esham's dope, ho, because the lyrics that I'm writing is proof. I'm selling this. These, this is for sale every time people want this. Like, this is not, it's just a proven formula that works. And um, yeah, my brother put me up on game and we just been running the play ever since, man. But it's really hip hop, you know, is the game, the culture. You know, I'm just everything that hip hop is and everything that music is really. So, you know, when I made Purgatory, you know, I felt like, you know, it's a prayer for the dead, you know, even if I was, people thought I was a horrible person, right? And I was somehow, if I pass away, whenever I do, you know, if I'm stuck in a place like purgatory, if all it takes is one person to say a prayer for me to get me out of there, I think I'm worth that. And I'm think, you know, I would say that prayer for somebody else too, you know what I'm saying? So that's what purgatory is for me, you know, it's it's a prayer for the dead and it's, it's for you to really like, um, reflect on these times and really figure out what's really important to you. And we see that the greats that have acknowledged you, Ice-T, he's he's a fan of your music, but I want to get into Judgment Day. Tupac, he used to ride around with this? You gave him the CDs? I mean, those are all rumors, you know. I will, In my mind, I hope Tupac was riding around listening to my music or whatever, whatnot, you know. You know, I've, I've had some, some business meetings, you know, with you know, the Suge Knights of the world and stuff like that. But they didn't materialize into no business and everybody went their separate ways. And I wish all those people well. Unfortunately, Tupac is no longer with us. So I can't confirm whether he was riding around listening to my music or not. But I hope he's somewhere listening to it wherever he is. Yeah. Maybe he's, he'll be listening to Purgatory wherever he's at. Or shit, let's say a prayer for Tupac if he in Purgatory and let's get him out of there. Yeah, absolutely. The greatest, one of the, one of the all-timers for sure. It, it, with all these label deals, because you were going, trying to get these deals back in the day. I think it, in the long run, it worked out because you've spoken about it, it just say, seeing how all the famous people were broke and you were independent and making money. Well, you know, what I looked at as some sort of um, roadblock or some some sort of hindrance was actually a blessing in disguise. You know, it was just a little harder for us to actually sell records and we had to try harder and we had to work harder, but it, um, it, it, it toughened our skin and made us stronger. I, just froze to up. Uh, I froze up. Yeah. Okay. Now you're good. Okay. But I'm just, um, speaking about the, the record business and, and people in it. And I totally forgot the question. Sorry. what you say? Oh yeah. With you in the long run, it was smarter for you to stay oh, independent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, Wait a minute. First of all, let me just get something straight here. If anybody called me Jimmy IV and somebody really wanted to sit down and talk about some money and some real shit, call me. You know what I'm saying? That's a misconception, too. Like, people think I stayed independent because I wanted to. No, I had to. You see what I'm saying now? And that's what I learned. Like, it's just like 
somebody telling you or asking you, yo, why you get up and go to work every day? Because I, I have to do that or ain't nobody going to do that for me. But that's what being independent taught me. You know, you got to do for self out here. Now, if Jimmy Iovine or Doug Morris, or anybody out there that got deep, deep pockets want to holler at me with, you know, six, seven hundred, eight hundred million dollars. Come on. I ain't turning them down. You know, but the independent thing came from a sheer drive of doors being slammed in my face and being told no, you know what I'm saying? And not taking no for an answer and not willing to give up or just because somebody else's engine failed doesn't mean my engine is going to fail. I'm going to keep working at it and just keep pushing forward. And I think, you know, that's what being independent is. You got to work every day and, and you just, you know, ain't nobody coming, you know? So it was, it was not by choice. It was like, by a need and a necessity to uh, not starve. A lot of people think, um, you know, I stayed independent because I wanted to. I was just stating that if anybody had like, you know, $800 million, Jimmy Iovine or Doug Morris or anybody that wanted to talk some real business, they can always call me. And I, I've never turned a phone call down from those guys. So a lot of people think I stayed independent because I wanted to. I'm just saying I stayed independent because I had to because wasn't nobody helping me. And that's just the moral of the story is there's no help, you know, and being independent, you know, it taught me a lot, but it's it's hard being independent, man. Just like it's hard being a grown man, it's hard being a father, it's hard being a bus driver if you get up every day and go to work. So independent just means you getting up, going to work every day. So if you get the gist of that, then you can be independent. But if you don't get the gist of that, then you can't be independent and go no. get you a deal. But you're under real life productions. For sure. That's, that's the label that you're with, man. And it's working out. You still got the fan base. People are all hot. I've seen the reception all online with Purgatory. This this is booming yeah. right now. Booming it with it's <laughs> words from hell. There's something different going on with Purgatory. I think uh, people are, you know, they're just, um, you know, getting a little um, frustrated with the current state of hip hop, the current state of music. And they they want real content again, man. And um, this is what I felt like um, I gave the people with Purgatory. And like I say, people are just still digesting it right now. It's it's really um to me a great a great album. I'm not just saying that because I made it. You know, I listen to it all the time, and I really hear what I'm saying, and I want other people to hear what I'm saying. So I think I got something to say, and I think it's worth being heard. So if you haven't heard Purgatory, you should go listen to it today, stream it, whatever you do, just check it out. Yeah, but you got to go check this out. Uh, taboos this club back in the day you open it up for fresh prince no jazzy doubt. jeff uh, it's just a dope experience you had all the grim reapers on stage charlie mack was there you yeah <laughs> yeah man um i mean and i'm you end up going on there and... yeah i'm pretty sure the fresh prince don't even know that all this stuff even existed you know what i'm saying when <laughs> He was doing his thing. He didn't care about no little kids from Detroit, you know, jumping on his stage. You know what I'm saying? But um, it was a cool experience, man, just to see the the Fresh Prince, you know, Will Fresh Prince before he actually blew up in that element. And just it was just cool. You know, and that's when I was um, paying my dues and just getting it in and learning as much as I can learn because I'm a student of the game. So there was just one of the many lessons that I learned along the way. So, you know, that's just what I'm here to do. I'm here to learn you know, hope to inspire a little bit, but definitely um, just here to spread the the love, man. A part of the many lessons I learned along the way, man, and it was just a part of me paying my dues. And um, that's just what it is. I'm a student to the game, man. You know, I'm still learning, so I don't know everything, but I'm I'm eager to learn and I'm you know, willing to listen. And that's what I do out here. And St. Clown Posse, you were running with them early on way early i heard about it and you helped them out just just being i mean we helped the, the each other person out, you are you know? yeah i think that's what um life is about man you know you you help some people along the way and shit they might see you down the road broke down and they might give you a ride you know shit like that so that's why you know it's it's always good to just live by the golden rule you know you want to treat people how you want to be treated and you know like i say try to spread love out here you know mm -hmm. and you were with psychopathic for two years that was a two year run. I mean, of course, you know, we we had a lot of fun over there. You know, we was helping each other out. You know, I wouldn't even I'm still with psychopathic, but not, you know, we are brothers to the end, man. So, you know, 
whenever they need me, I'm over there and vice versa. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's real shit. I mean, it's real family type shit. So yeah, those are my brothers. I have some pictures here of you because I like the concepts of what you were doing with your career and just your albums and the, and the makeup that you used to play with. And this is one of them. Just tell them, walk me through the concept. Cause I have one here of you oh, creating yeah. this character of yourself. Well, basically, you know, the album was called tongues, you know, mm -hmm. and I've always felt like, um, some type of ghost, you know, or <laughs> like, I'm not even here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm here, but I'm not here. So it was almost like a play on, um, you know, a statuous, statuous figure type of deal. Like, you know, maybe like a gargoyle or something, you know. Um, I just had a bunch of clay on my fucking face, you know, smeared it all on my face. And um, then when it dried up, it had this fucking effect on it. It looked like zombie. It was it was ill, you know. It was, it's fire. Yeah. Yeah. You know, crazy part about that story. We did that photo shoot and it was all for the album. But I didn't take a, a shower at the studio. So back then, this was before the dispensaries opened up. So I, I wanted to stop by this little house. I stopped by this house to get some bud. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had the shit all up <laughs> my face. So you had to go to the back. It was like a back door. Then just a hole in the door. You knock. And then they stick the bud out. You stick the money in. That type of deal, right? So I went in there because nobody could see me. You know what I'm saying? I went in there. I got my bud. But on the way out they had another customer coming and then he saw me man like you know i know that shit was so scary because he looked like he just saw like some walking ghost dead motherfucker he just started running like a motherfucker like it was the craziest shit i ever seen in my life and then i was like what the fuck is wrong with him and then i just you know i forgot i had that shit on my shit you know what i'm saying <laughs> it was a funny story but um <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, yeah, like I'm going to the, the bud house, you know what I'm saying? This motherfucker got scared. Like he probably don't smoke bud no more after that shit, though. But yeah, whatever. Oh, I think you froze. Yeah, you're good now. I, I I think about it because Snoop Dogg did the hood of horror back in the day. Did you ever think about doing some sort of your own horror movie in a way? Did you ever consider that? Because you're so into that. And just I mean, I work, I work with people, you know, different couple different people in the horror genre. I, you know, I always look to work with more. You know what I'm saying? Definitely a big fan of uh, directors like Quentin Tarantino and um, fucking all those people, man. You know, if anybody out there want to holler at me, holler at me. That's what it is. You know, I'm here, you know, just to spread the love. And, you know, I don't want no more than my share. I want my fair and equal share. So that's what's going on here, buddies. Exactly. Is this the same? I, I think this is the same one. This is just, just from a different angle, too. That's probably the same. Yeah, that's, just that's a different same, angle. Yeah, yeah. It's a different angle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we just got the most out of it that day. That's from the album Tongues. And, um, you know, each one of my albums just take me back to whatever time period, you know, what, what was going on. You know, I was living in some dark times in those days, you know, and um, the music reflects it to me when I do listen to it. So that's really what I mean about the music. And for me, you know, these are different times in my life. You know, shit, some of those records came out. I didn't think another one was going to come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> there's all type of crazy shit be going on in my life, you know, to even put these records out. You know, it's not as easy as it is today. You know, it was really hard back in the day to put those records out. You know, you had to go through a lot to actually get that, you know, that physical record to somebody's hand. So... You know, a lot of those records just remind me of the times and actually what was going on in my life, you know. So that's what I mean about purgatory. And um, it's more of a true reflection of who I am as a person, opposed to people hearing me entertain people over the years, you know, although I'm still entertaining. Put out people. The, the double album, too. Well, yep, yeah, I probably was the first person to do a lot of stuff. You know, I don't think anybody had a double album out when we did that, you know. And the only reason I say it, because, yes, it was released into the marketplace. It is documented. You know what I'm saying? So if anybody want to go and do some research, you know, fun facts, yeah. <laughs> documented, you know. But, yeah, I was just doing these things. I wasn't doing them to be the first. We was just I just we was just working like that. You know, I'm running plays and it's just like any great coach or any great athlete on a team. And you got a hell of a playbook. These are just plays that we created and wrote them down, you know, and, and if somebody came along and seen one of the plays we ran and if they ran it and it worked for them, these just proven formulas that work in the game, you know, so, you know, we just here to pass it down. So I'm not ever mad at anybody coming behind me and doing anything that I've ever done. 
you know, because as my wife would say, the sun going to shine on my face first and everything else is shadow behind me. I wanted to bring up your homie don't play that album because we talk about you having an inspiration, but I think the makeup on, well, you know, homie don't play. Yes. I was the first person to paint up and call myself a clown okay. and rap. It was the first wicked clown ever acknowledged on record. Right. Mm -hmm. Then that's what you're talking about, which is really cool. You know, I was inspired by the character from a living color. I can't, I can't act like I made that up. You know, as far as homie don't play, all that shit, it is what it is, man. Yeah, the story's true. I was the first one, you know what I'm saying? I was the first to do a lot of things, you know? And I'm not saying that to be like, I was the first motherfucker to do it. It just so happens that I was the guy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not I'm not trying to toot my horn, but, you know, sometimes I need to, but I, I'm just, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but at the end of the day, it's all love, man, because it built this beautiful culture. They build a subgenre. It's a lot of people, you know, feeding their families off this. It's a lot of people moving forward and being positive from this music, man. So I wish everybody well. I hope y'all listen to Purgatory. And um, yeah, check me out if I'm in your city or in your town. The Purgatory Tour, you already know what it is. Dev Flowers, that's my all-time favorite album from you. Dead right. flower. That, that's that's the one. Tony Montana. What? Those are my two favorite songs off that one. No, I was in a good place on Dead Flowers too. You know, that, that's some good times for me as well. You know, that was that was a real good um year, and I was in a good headspace on Dead Flowers. So I think the music was in reflection to that. So yeah, if you listen to it, that's what I'm saying. It's just a reflection of where I was at in time. So, and, and all your work is that way too. Yes, sir. Yeah, not us all of it. The box set. Absolutely. A complete innovator right here. And they could check you out, acidrap.com for everything. Yeah, but just holler at me. And like I say, you know, uh, any one of these billionaires out there, Elon Musk, y'all want to, you know, give me a job at Tesla. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk some money. Let's talk some real numbers. 800 million and up, and I'm I'm down with anybody. Let's roll. Let's get this back. Right. Keep doing your thing, man. Purgatory available on all platforms. You're always welcome on the show. I'm down <laughs> with you, man, Max. I appreciate you, brother. You already know, man. They can follow you on Instagram at Esham Smith. And where can they follow you on Twitter? Your Twitter's different. I think it's just all Esham, man. You'll see me on there, you know, dropping positive bombs. That's what I do. You already know. Esham, man, thank you for everything. Keep thank going. You, Purgatory man. available on all platforms, and it's in my rotation.